Central. I uh, hope you were excited to wake up this morning to a white day after Christmas. Uh, bummed we didn't have a white Christmas, but I mean, day after is pretty close. Uh, and obviously we're not having church in person today. When I got up this morning, I looked out the window and checked the cameras at the church and the cameras on the roads around the church and it's all white. So I decided we might as well stay home. We've got great practice at doing online church and so we're going to just take advantage of that and we'll just worship together online this morning. So, so thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us online. Those of you that have been joining us online, this is nothing new for you. So just it's going to be the same thing that you do every Sunday. So welcome. Thanks for being here. Those of you that maybe this is your first time to our church online service, we want to welcome you as well. And thanks so much for being here. We'd love for you to take a second, get connected with us. There's a connection tab. Uh, there's a link here in the chat that you can check out so that you can just stay up to date with all the things that are happening in life at Central, ways you can be involved, ways you can serve, ways you can, uh, we have classes that happen on Mondays, Wednesdays, and after church on Sundays. So just options for you. Uh, we also have some exciting things coming up. We have a men's retreat at the end of January, women's retreat at the end of February, and there's information that gets emailed out about that. 
um, where to register, how to register, the cost for those things. So you really want to make sure that you are signed up for our emails and that you are reading our emails. So again, there's a link there in the chat for you to be able to connect and for you to also make sure you're signed up and receiving, receiving our emails. Well, one thing I'm bummed about in not being able to do in-person service today is that we were supposed to do a baptism. And I was so excited about being able to baptize a couple of folks today, but we're going to do that. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to do that next Sunday. And if you uh, would like to be baptized, if you want to take that next step in your walk with God, you want to make that public confession of your faith and of the, this outward, uh, this outward acknowledgement of what God is doing in you, then would you let me know? Because I'd love the opportunity to, to celebrate your relationship with Christ and to baptize you as well. So we'll try to do that again uh, on next Sunday. And if you want to be baptized, just click on the thing in the chat and we will make sure that you and I connect so that we can talk about your baptism. So excited about that. And don't forget to say something in the chat. That's, that's what I was going to say. Don't forget to say hi. Let us know that you're watching. Let us know where you're watching from. You don't have to create an account if you don't want to. Uh, so just put your name in the, in the box when it asks and you'll be ready to go. All right, well, let's pray. Lord God, we just thank you for your goodness. We thank you, God, for the snow outside this morning. We thank you that we have the opportunity to gather together in our homes and still be together in Christ. And we're just asking for your spirit to move in our hearts this morning to challenge us, encourage us. God, I pray that the end, at the end of our time together today, every single one of us will have drawn closer to you. And uh, God, we thank you for all that you are. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <music> like a hurricane I am like tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy when all of a sudden I'm unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affection I sing, oh, how he loves us so, oh, how he loves us, how he loves us so. If grace is enough 
chest I do not have the time to maintain these regrets When I think about the way that he loves us Oh, how he loves us Oh, how he loves us Oh, how he loves Yeah, he
You turn beauty for ashes You turn shame into glory You're the only one who can You turn graves into gardens You turn bones into armies You turn seas into highways You're the only Lord God, today we thank you for the opportunity to be gathered together. And we thank you, God, first of all, for the love that you have for us. We thank you, God, for the, the new life that we can have in you, that you can turn graves into gardens, that you can take broken bones and, and bring healing, God, and make them whole again, that you can take uh, and, God, make something out of nothing. God, we praise you today for your goodness for your love for us, God, and man, we just thank you for, for meeting us right where we are. God, continue to speak to us today as we spend a few minutes together in your word. God, may we find challenge, encouragement, but God, most of all, may we find, uh, find you in our midst today. God, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I just wanted to share with you just a brief message today. I don't have a super long message for you, but um, I just wanted to talk to you this morning about what happened the day after Christmas. And so I want to read to you the story of what happened the day after Christmas. Now, the interesting thing about this story is that a lot of us read this story, maybe even on Christmas Eve, maybe on Christmas Day with our families. We read this as the Christmas story, or at least part of it. But I want you to know that what I'm about to read and what we so often read as the Christmas story actually happened the day after Christmas. Assuming, of course, that we're talking about when we say Christmas, we're talking about the day that Christ was born. And so we're talking about what happened the day after Jesus was born. And so follow along with me. Follow along with me. I just want to point out a few things about what 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 I see happening and what jumps out at me in the story the day after Christmas. So in Luke chapter 2, let me tell you what happened on that day. It says, Luke chapter 2, starting at verse 8, it says, In the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold... I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was the angel, a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from, there, from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the, the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Now, see, we read this story and we talk about this being the Christmas story. And it is. It's the Christmas story. It's the story about the birth of Christ. But... I want you to pay attention to this because this is actually the story of what happened the next day. So we know how this all is set up, right? That Jesus and, and Mary, or not Jesus, Joseph and Mary had traveled to, to be accounted in the census and they couldn't find any room. There were no hotels available, nothing for them. So they went to a barn. They found a place in this in this, uh, in this this manger, in this basically would have been like a cave almost. 
and a place for them to hang out and to sleep. Well, during that time, of course, as we know, Mary ended up giving birth to Christ. And then this story takes place. So it was on that same night that the shepherds were out in their field keeping watch over their flock. And it was that same night of the birth of Christ that these angels showed up and decided to tell them about Jesus. And then it was, I'm going to guess, either that night or early the next day when the shepherds finally showed up to see what had they had been talking about, to see what all this commotion was all about. Now, there are some things that just blow my mind about this story. The first thing about this story is that this, this all happened with a bunch of shepherds. Um, now, these shepherds, you need to understand something about shepherds. This wasn't a prized prized piece of employment. This wasn't something that, that people really wanted to be. Nobody really wanted to be a shepherd. The shepherds during this time, they were like, you know, they were those kind of people, you know. Those people, you know, the people that probably weren't the smartest. Uh, they probably weren't the most uh, clean. Uh, I mean, go go hang out with a bunch of sheep for a few weeks and see how clean you are, right? I mean, they were dirty. They were they were just kind of the outcasts. They were unclean in so many ways. They were unclean religiously. They wouldn't have been able to participate in a lot of the religious events or activities or gatherings of their day. They were unclean. They were outcasts. They were looked down upon. They were kind of, you know, those people. The people that... Man, we avoid, we don't talk to, we don't associate with, um, that we don't really get along with, that we don't have very many things in common with. So these are the shepherds. That's those people. These weren't the religious elite of the day. They weren't the most popular people of the day. They weren't the most sought after people of the day. It was those people. Probably the kind of people that just blend in to the scenery, they blend into the background, and you don't really even pay attention to them or give them another thought. It's just, oh, oh, oh yeah, that's, that's one, of, one of those people. But to, to think about this for just a second, that on the day after Christmas, on the day after Jesus was born, it was those people that were first invited to come meet Christ. Those people were doing their thing out in the fields, keeping watch over their sheep. They were minding their own business. And then God showed up. These angels showed up and they said, guys, we have some great news for you. Your life is about to be changed. Things are about to be totally different for you. We have got this great news. We have something that's going to change the world. And we want you to be the first ones to go and meet him. That's just mind-blowing to me that, man, I think when we have that kind of news, there's, I mean, if you have life-changing news, who's the first person you're going to go and tell about it? Is it one of those people? Or is it a close family member, a best friend? You know, like we have that. We don't think about going and telling those people, but this is the kind of God we serve. This is the kind of God we serve, the God that thinks first of those people that invites those people first, that goes to those people and says, come hear about this great joy. Come hear about this good news that I have that's going to change the world. The first group of people, the day after Jesus is born, that gets told about the arrival of Christ, it's those people. I love that. I love knowing that God thinks first of the least of these, of the least among us, of the, of the ignored. Of, he thinks of the sinner first before he thinks of the saint. And that's, that's huge for us. That's huge for us to think that's the kind of God, that's the kind of love that God has for us. And so today, the day after Christmas, I want you to know that God has thought of you first, that you are the first one he thought of when he sent Christ here, when his one and only son was born into this world, the first person he wanted to tell was you. That's, you are it. You are the one that Jesus wanted to share the most important piece of information ever on the face of the planet with. He thought of you. He thought of these shepherds. And so these angels show up, or they receive this news. 
which is interesting to me. They don't go looking for Jesus. The angels come to them and invite them to go look for Jesus. That's God's grace at work in our life. You know, we don't go looking for God on our own all the time. Most of the time, it's because the Holy Spirit is drawing us to him, right? That's, that's the other awesome thing about this is that Jesus is born. God doesn't wait for people to come find him. God goes and finds people and says, come meet him. See, that's how much God cares about us. God isn't waiting for the light bulb to flick on in your head and go, I should go look for Jesus. God isn't waiting for you to think, man, I should go find God. God is coming to you going, why don't you come find me? Why don't you come look for me? Come meet me. Like this, the day after Christ is born, the invitation is starting to be given. Come find me. Come meet me. Come meet Christ. Come find this good news. Come join in the celebration. So he first thinks of those lost people. He thinks of those people first. And then he goes and invites them to come and meet him. And he goes and he does that with all of us. He thinks about us. You're the first person he wants to tell about this good news. And then he invites you to come and meet him. So the day after Jesus is born, those people are being thought of and those people are being invited. Because that's the kind of love that God has for us. So the shepherds go. So those people are invited. And those people go, and the shepherds go, and they find Jesus wrapped in these swaddling clothes, lying in the manger. And I can't help but think, what is Mary thinking? Mary's probably thinking, oh, here come the workers, right? Here come those guys. This is their barn. This is their place. This is their field. Here they come. They're going to kick us out. But they're not coming to kick Mary out. They're coming to see this gift that Mary has. They're coming to see this, this message that they've been told about. So, so these shepherds are the first ones to show up to meet Jesus. It's not the religious leaders of the day coming to see the most important message in the world. It's the shepherds. Those people are the first ones to come and meet Christ. And they went and they found Mary. And it was there that they started to tell Mary, look, these are what, look, let me tell you this story, Mary. We were out in our fields, and God thought about us, and God came and told us about you and about Jesus. Nobody ever thinks about us, Mary. Nobody ever considers us. Nobody ever wonders about where we are or what we're doing, and nobody ever comes and tells us any good news, let alone we are never the first ones to know. In fact, Mary, we're, we're usually the last, but, but now look, we're the first ones to know. And I, I just picture the shepherds there celebrating with Mary the fact that God thought about them and the fact that God invited them to come and meet Jesus. And they're just like, ah, oh, and Mary's going, wow, this is amazing. It's amazing that God would, first of all, consider me the one to carry his child and to bring this good news into the world, to trust me with this. And so Mary's probably going, yeah, nobody really ever thought about me either. I'm just this young girl from Nazareth. Like, no, I'm nobody either. And, and they're just celebrating together how the God of the universe, the creator of everything, has thought about them. The creator of everything has considered them all important enough to carry the most important gift into the world, to carry the most important message into the world. God thought about those people and trusted those people first. So I picture in this barn or in this cave, gathered around this baby, a group of those people, Mary, Joseph, the shepherds, all standing there going, how amazing is God? How amazing is God that he would even think about me and consider me that important and trust me with that kind of message. But that's what's happening the day after Christmas. And right now today, on this day after Christmas, you need to know God thinks of you the same way. You are important to him and you are valued by him and he loves you and he is doing everything he can to get your attention and to invite you into his presence. But these shepherds and this Mary and then Joseph and they celebrated and they were there together. And then it says, I love this, Mary treasured all these things. 
She held them close because, man, the, the birth of your child is one thing, but to realize that the birth of your child on the first day he's born is already changing lives. I mean, these shepherds were, were never going to be the same. The angel has showed up. God has showed up. God has invited them. When nobody else does, they've celebrated in this manger together and now they're leaving to go back home. And Mary is just going, I just, I just gave birth to my first child and I'm a virgin. That's amazing in itself. And now I've got these shepherds coming and God is already using this baby who was just born. He's, he's hours old and he's already changing lives. This is amazing. And the shepherds would go back, glorifying and praising God for all that he, they had seen and heard and everything that had been told them. So the day after Christmas, the day after Jesus was born, lives were already being changed to the point where they were going back to life different than they left it, right? These shepherds came out of the field being those people. They go back being those people, right? But now those people are the ones that everybody's talking about. For centuries, folks, for thousands of years, everybody is now talking about those people, those shepherds who were there. They're celebrated. They're in every one of our manger scenes. Like they're everywhere. These guys' lives will never be the same. And they go back. They go back to the fields. They go back to their sheep. But more importantly, they're back with their friends. They're back with their family. And it says they're glorifying and praising God. They are telling people this story. They are telling people what happened. They are telling people what this angel said. The day after Christmas, those people are the very ones taking the good news back to their families. The day after Christmas, lives are being changed the first day Jesus is here, before he can even speak, his very life is changing people's hearts and lives. And the shepherds go back glorifying and praising God the day after Jesus was born. Today, the day after Jesus, the day after we celebrate the birth of our Savior, man, I wonder how excited you are about that. I wonder how you're going back to your life tomorrow. Tomorrow, most of us will go back to work. Most of us will, the vacation is over. The Christmas break is over. We're, we're leaving the manger and we're going back to life. How are we going back to that life? Are we going back to that life like those people? glorifying and praising God and celebrating all that he is and telling everyone of this good news and telling all the people what we have seen and what we have heard. And when we go back to life tomorrow, when we go back to the old same routine, man, how are we going to be different? Because we have been invited to meet Jesus. We have met Christ. We know Christ. We, we are in a relationship with Christ. How is that reflected in our life every single day? Are we telling people? Are we telling people that, you know what, the, heaven, the, the creator of the universe has thought about me. He knows who I am. He knows my name. He found me right in my darkness. He found me out in the field with the sheep. He found me when I was lost. He found me. He fixed me. He picked me up. He invited me to come meet him. And then he invited me into a relationship. And it's just been amazing ever since. How are we going to go back into life sharing that message this week? I'm excited for the day after Christmas because it's the day after Christmas where lives are starting to be transformed and people are starting to be changed. It's the day after Christmas. Jesus has come. Jesus has invited all of us into his presence. Now, how are we going to go about glorifying and praising God every single day after this? I love knowing that we have a God who, who gives us that kind of love and in turn extends to us that kind of hope. We have a hope in Christ that, that no matter where we are in life, he's thinking about you. He knows where you are today. He knows the field you're in. He knows the pain you have. He knows what you're struggling in and he's gonna come find you. 
And he's going to invite you to go with him. He's going to invite you to come and be with him. Man, take that invitation. Take that invitation no matter where you are. If you're on a mountaintop or you're in a valley, every single time God invites, respond with yes. I'll come. I'll be there. I'll meet you. God's never going to leave us. He's never going to leave those people. He's never going to forget about us. That's the biggest message I get from the day after Christmas. That the very ones that need him the most are the very ones he's running to and inviting to come and meet him. Today, that invitation is open. Today, God is inviting you to meet him. He's inviting you to come and sit with him. He's inviting you to come and celebrate with him. He's, he's inviting you to come and cry with him. He's inviting you to come and be broken with him. He's inviting you to come and just simply be with him. And I can tell you right now, that once we've been with Christ, nothing will ever be the same. The shepherds came from the fields and they met Jesus, and they were never the same. Folks, we have, we have a tremendous amount of hope in Christ today. And I encourage you, run to him, meet him, meet him, and live your life like you've never lived it before. Lord God, today we thank you for the message we can have and the hope we can have in Christ. Thank you, God, for thinking about us, for, for inviting us to come and, and meet you. Thank you, God, for that invitation. And I pray right now that we all respond with a yes, God. Yes, I will come meet you. Yes, I will run to that manger and see for myself all that has been told to me. I, I hear these stories, God, of changed lives and forgiveness and healing and I hear all of that and God I'm ready to come meet you and experience that healing and that forgiveness and that transformation for myself. God today we gather with you and celebrate you and, and we just are in awe of who you are. And God as we experience you as we meet you, some maybe for the first time, give us the words to tell others about you. To go on about our lives for today and tomorrow and every day, glorifying and praising you. God, do a work in us today. God, we love you and we praise you and thank you for all that you are. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As I walk the great unknown Questions come and questions go was there purpose for this pain, or did I cry these tears in vain? I don't want to live in fear, I want to trust that you are near. Trust your grace can be seen in both triumph and tragedy. Cause I have this hope. My soul in the flood or the fire, you with me and you won't let go. But sometimes my faith feels thin, like night will never end. Will you catch every tear or will you just leave me here? This hole in the depths of my soul, in the flood or the fire, you with me, you won't let go. Yeah. I have this hole in the depths of my soul.
Blood on the fire, you're with me, and you won't let go. 